Hi, I'm the Lockpicking Cuber, and in this video, I'm going to show you the method that I use to solve this handlebar bandaged Rubik's Cube. In case you haven't seen this puzzle, it's just like a normal 3x3 Rubik's Cube, but where these two edges, the white red and the white orange, are attached together by this handlebar. So there are certain moves that you can do just like normal, and then there are moves that you just can't do. If I try to do this move here, uh, the handlebar stops me. So, I reviewed this puzzle and I showed my first attempt at solving it in video number 27, which you can check out. I'll link to it below, but in this video I'm just going to show you how I solve it. And I should explain uh, in advance that this video assumes you already know how to solve normal Rubik's Cubes. In fact, it assumes you're pretty proficient with them. So, if you don't, then this tutorial is not going to help you. But if you do know how to solve a Rubik's Cube, this will just give you the steps you need to follow to consistently solve this puzzle. Okay. So I start out uh, doing a yellow cross, and generally speaking, that's pretty straightforward. All you end up doing really is just sort of having to move the handlebar out of the way uh, to make certain moves possible. So for example, it's pretty easy to get this green yellow edge into place. And then when I want to turn this layer to get this uh, red yellow edge into place, I'm just going to have to do this to let me turn the layer. Okay, so I'm going to do that and then turn this to get that out of the way so that I can do that. Okay, so that's those three edges in place. And then again, for this last edge, if I want to get that into place, can't do it with the handlebar there. So I'm going to have to move this edge out of the way so that I can get the handlebar out of the way. And then, bingo. Now notice I was very lucky there and I got a pre-built pair. So I'm just going to insert that as normal. Um, at this point, there are two possibilities. Uh, once you've done the cross, either the handlebars are going to be um, down here in the uh, second layer, or they're going to be on the top face. doesn't really matter. All you're aiming to do is to get two of these pairs done. Um, and obviously, if you've got the handlebar down here like I have, then you can't do these two pairs. So you have to do these two pairs or get the handlebar up on the top. doesn't really matter. But anyway, I notice ah, I got super lucky here with this pair as well. That's a really easy case, so I'm just going to insert it. It doesn't really matter the detail there. All you need to do is just make sure you get two pairs solved. What I do next is, because you can't do anything with these two pairs without having the handlebar up on the top, you just stick the handlebar up on the top. So just in case that is a non-obvious move, I think it's obvious. Um, uh, you're doing this kind of um, M move, and then like a U prime, and then an M prime. That gets the handlebars up on top. Now for the next stage, rather than doing these as pairs and completing the F2L, I treat this more like an FMC solve at this point. So what, all I'm trying to do is get these two edges in place. If I happen to get lucky and get the corners in as well, great. But it turns out, uh, after a lot of experimentation, that getting the full F2L is not impossible, but it's incredibly painful and convoluted. It's much easier to do it this way. So uh, I just want to get these two, um, these two edges in place. Uh, so I'm just going to do that in the sort of fairly obvious way. Okay, uh, so now I've got the, these two layers done apart from two corners. This is what I generally end up with. Um, and then these two edges here obviously have to be correctly oriented uh, and positioned relative to each other. The question is, will these two edges be oriented correctly and or will they be positioned correctly? In this case, they happen to be positioned correctly. Um, if they're not, I'll, I'll show you what to do. If they're not oriented correctly, then um, you can do whatever you like to flip these two edges. So I just use, there's a particular algorithm that I, somebody taught me at a UK competition where I just like the rhythm of it. So I just get these up onto the top where I can move them freely and you can do MU moves. And then I go MU, 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 M, U2, MU, 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 M. So that's flipped them. And what we're left with now is um, the cube is completely solved apart from six of the corners. But uh, I just want to show you what to do if you don't get lucky and you do have uh, two edges that you need to swap. Okay, so here we've got a case where I've done this first two layers apart from these two corners. Uh, and then what we've got on top is if we put the handlebar onto the correct place, then these two edges, although they're, they're oriented correctly, they're in the wrong positions. So what I do then is I bring them down to the bottom, switch, switch them around, bring them back. Okay, so now this layer is good. Now what we've done is we've sort of messed up the yellow layer. Um, and if we had sort of full access to our full suite of algorithms, we could just do like a T-perm. Uh, so if you know a 2-gen T-perm, for example, you can just use that here. Um, what I do, really simplistic, is I do a soon. And then... Uh, I just use a U-perm to f make sure I've got all the edges relative to each other. Uh, 
that and there we go so now i've got all the edges solved and i've messed up all the corners um, usually by this point you've got something like six five or six corners to solve in this case i got unlucky and have all eight corners to solve but that's fine and then we just use commutators to solve them and the way i hold it the way i orient it is with the handlebar on the left here green on the bottom blue on the top um, you could hold it the other way up as well um, that's fine uh, and what I do is I look for just nice easy cases. So I mean this one's easy with a triple sexy, so I just go boom, 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 boom. Get that one into place. This one uh, is simply straightforward uh, and that's going to want to go there. So just do this commutator. You have to adjust your commutators ever so slightly just to take account for the fact that you can't do F moves. Um, but otherwise it's fine. Okay, so now what we've got is this corner is in the correct place but needs to be twisted, and we've got these other corners that are uh, all in the wrong places. Um, so lots of ways to deal with that, but what I'm actually going to do here is just use this as a kind of buffer, solve this corner and go on from there. So, oh actually that's going to solve two corners, we're going to left with three, so that's great. That'll leave me three corners, so we're going to just do this. Um, and, oh, sorry, four corners we've got left. So I'm going to use the same trick here. And now we've got three corners. So, oh, and in fact, it's just going to be a straightforward single commutator to solve these remaining corners. Oops. Usually what I do, and so solve. So usually what happens is I end up with some twisted corners and then I just use the standard um, twisting algorithm, which I assume you're going to know. So. If you've got two twisted corners next to each other, you basically um, take this corner out and then reinsert it. And so that's twisted that corner. Then we do an interchange here and then we just inverse those moves. Um, so just in case you need to know that. Okay, so those are the steps. So in other words, it's a yellow cross, two pairs, final two edges, um, orient the white layer uh, edges and position the white layer edges, ideally with the corners, but not always. Um, then get the uh, yellow layer edges oriented and permuted, uh, and then solve all the remaining corners using commutators. That's how I solve it. Uh, I'm sure you'll have different methods, so let me know in the comments. I'll be interested to hear how you solve this puzzle. Um, and if you've enjoyed watching this video, then please do subscribe to see more videos like it. All right, thanks so much for watching. Bye.